plane in Alaska on my way to the next family. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. Hi, I'm Brian McAfee. I'm 29. I'm a single father of four kids. You want to pout all day then? There's Eliana, who's nine. Ellie! Silas is seven. Kaya is five. I want him here now! And Anna is three. <laughs> I never expected to be a single father at 29. Yeah, I've been divorced for two years, and I have my kids with me full time. And it has been difficult just being one person with four kids. Do you want to hold on to the cart, or do you want to hold my hand? I'm in over my head, and I don't know what to do about it. Nice. I shut up. Where did you get that? It's very difficult, especially with Eliana, Kaya, and Anna. They want to talk about girl things, and I'm just not into girl things. Don't be putting any more on, okay? Three girls and one boy. That's got his hands full. Stop it. Big belly. Silas, that's not very nice. My kids do not respect me. I'm standing on the bed. They treat me a lot of times like I'm their brother. They don't want to listen to what I have to say. This man's so quiet. These kids are walking all over him. Or this and that. Don't do that. Eliana has a lot of mood swings. She's also becoming very defiant. You throw anything, and I swear to the living God, there'll be consequences. Silas is very aggressive. It's his sister. Stop it! And I don't know what to do with his behavior. You are looking at <laughs> Kaya throws way too many tantrums for being a five-year-old. <laughs> when she does that, I, I kind of shut down. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Anna's the baby of the family. Probably gonna get away with too much because she throws tantrums too. I don't know how to discipline them. I don't know how to run a household. <laughs> OK, I'm sorry. You smacked your head. Super Nanny, I'm a single father of four kids, and I just really need your help. This single dad desperately needs my help, but I'm on my way. Pleased to meet you. Joe. And that's Anna, she's three. Hiya. Hi. Oh, she's this little shy. I have one more upstairs. Ellie. Oh, let's go upstairs then. Having Joe come to my house was a little nerve-wracking. You know, I didn't know what my kids were gonna do or how they would react. And a little embarrassing. You know, a single dad should be strong, should know how to handle his kids. She's nine years old. I'm Joe. How are you? So you lot must be all getting ready for school, right? We're getting ready for school. We're getting them all out the door here. Okay, dokie. Well, you know why I'm here. So, um, I'm going to put my bag down and uh, just watch you guys get ready after school. Okay. All right. Get me out of here. Kai, are you done with breakfast? I haven't even ate breakfast. Well, let's eat something. No! <laughs> Stop it. Silas, come on, let's brush your teeth. Ow! <laughs> Right off the bat, I could tell that mornings were a real challenge for Brian. Stop saying that. Brian's incredibly passive. Knock it off. He doesn't say boo to a mouse, really. They don't listen to him. Ellie, don't tease me. Just give it to me. They misbehave when he chases them so that they'll stop. They laugh at him. <laughs> what are you laughing about? They really don't take him seriously. It's like, Brian, get a grip. Sort these kids out. They've got no respect for you. All right, look, go get your shoes and stuff on. Put your shoes on. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to miss the bus. Come on. Come on. Hmm? This is where we wait, right here. All right, this is where it is. Yeah. So literally, a stone's throw away. It is. Stay out of the water, Silas. Do, do you know some of the neighbors? Not personally, no. 
And you're involved in all the PTAs and all the other mums and no. dads. No, I just, I'm not, Woo, just haven't got into that stuff. Brian's doing this all on his own. He doesn't know any of the other parents and he's not involved in his children's school. Well, there you go. Shipped on the bus until later on this afternoon. Let's see what Dad does with his time. Uh-oh. It fell down it. Mm-hmm. With the older kids on the bus, I had a good chance to catch up with Brian and get to know him a little better. So what's the most difficult thing about literally being put in this position right now? I mean, you and your partner are not together anymore. But what would you say is the most challenging for you? The most challenging thing is finding time with each child. They all want my attention. Mm. I want them to feel, you know, a connection with me, and it just kind of feels right now like we're just kind of coexisting. I never imagined myself being single. Very difficult just being used to someone, and then to have that just all gone and what seemed like a day uh, was just very overwhelming. Does it feel to yourself very much a lonely experience? It does. It does. I feel very isolated. I mean, um, especially when I got divorced. I feel kind of like a disappointment to them, you know, like they wanted a family. You know, mom and dad stay together. So you personally feel that you're letting them down all the time? Right? I do. And well, that puts a lot of stress on you every day, surely? It does, it does. I do feel sorry for Brian because of the situation he's been put in. It's a fact Brian's divorce has knocked him sideways. Emotionally, he's very down. But he can't go any lower than where he's at. The only way for Brian is up. Right here. Kids home. When the kids get back home from school, I'm, uh, you know, I just say to myself, I don't know how to deal with it because here I am again being pulled in four different directions. Is that something that's a challenge for you, Brian? Keeping on top of all the homework? Oh yes, like this for example, this is Silas's work that he just stuffed in his cubby. So I got a note from the teacher with a frowny face saying that he stuffed this in his cubby instead of doing it. And these are pretty typical. I'll show you what. Uh, these right here are the times that he's gotten in trouble for bullying. Silas pushed another child to the ground. There are lots of wandering, it says, so lack of focus here. He will not And concentration. Here. Brian obviously knows that there's a big problem here, but I wonder what he's doing about it. I need this homework! Dad! Count it out. Oh, I don't want to count it out. That's because you do the work, I'm not doing the work for you. Homework time is just a major battle for me because I constantly have to fight with him and we just go back and forth and back and forth. Silas, if you just do it, you'll get it done and, and it'll, it'll be over with. There's Silas really struggling with his homework and there's Brian not really recognising what he should be doing to keep his son focused. Brian's approach towards Silas's homework should be one of enthusiasm and it's not. Silas, calm down and finish it. After observing Silas really struggling with his homework, I decided to take a look around the house. Okay. Silas's room, okay. With daddy. With who? With my daddy. Your daddy sleeps with Silas? Right, okay. I couldn't believe that Brian sleeps on his son's floor on an air mattress. But what I found out afterwards was even more shocking. What's this room here? That's Dad's old room. That's Dad's That's old room. The designated junk room. I'm only one person with two hands. It's very difficult to manage the simplest things. So this room represents stuff that you need to deal with, but keep until tomorrow. Keep until tomorrow, yeah. That's right. Okay. Kind of like Brian's life right now. Deal with it tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. The children don't live with their mum anymore, but I'm really curious to find out what kind of a relationship they've got with their father. Hey, girls, does Dad know what to do with you both, like, as your girls and you like to do girly things? No? He what? doesn't gr do girly stuff. He don't do girly things? No. Really? Dad, can we have some eyeshadow? It doesn't matter. This is a girl thing right now. Close your eyes. Oh, you've got the same as me now, blue. Yes. Yeah. The same as me. Oh, cool. I think that's going to be a real challenge for Brian, how he connects with his daughters. But it's so important that he learns to do that. Girly thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're okay. 
Soon after my chat with the girls, though, things started kicking off again. Stop it. I hate families! When Kaya throws a tantrum, she's the one I usually just put in the room. Go to your room, then. No! I don't want to hear it. It upsets all the other kids, and I don't know how to deal with it. Wall or room? None! Pick one. None! Okay, I'll pick one for you. Room. No! Kaya's tantrums are really annoying because they're loud and noisy. Let go. No! Son, hey, don't hit me. Go. I'm trusting. Just stay in here until you can behave yourself, please. Silas, what made you hit Dad? He was carrying Kaya. Is that normal behavior? Yes. One child hitting you when the other one, when you're trying to discipline the other. He'll do it, especially with Kaya. He thinks that I'm hurting her or something, and he'll just do it. Brian's really struggling to cope, but what I know he needs is parenting 101. Brian, you're a single dad. You're raising four kids. You're trying to pull everything together. But I recognize Brian. That feeling sorry for you is not going to move you on to the place where you need to be for yourself and your family. Right. Where is discipline with the kids, Brian? That's a good question. Silas hits you in the back when he sees you disciplining Kaya. They think it's OK to hit you and do what they want and you do nothing. You pity them like you pity yourself. But where is that going to get you, Brian? Nowhere. Homework. Homework is a joke. Silas is so frustrated with his homework. He really does need help. There's no encouragement, there's no praise, there's no, let me sit down with you, son, and let's go through the homework together. That's not the right approach. Three girls in the house, they want to have fun doing girly stuff. And that is what I would like to see you doing with them. Ask them what they want to do. Give it a shot. You know, a feminine thing, and it's hard for me to, to do, but I'm willing to do it, whatever it takes to get them to reconnect with me. So the sleeping arrangements. I've got to ask, what are you doing in Silas's bedroom? You're a grown man. It just seems quieter down there than it does up in my room. That's a lot of baloney, Brian. What's the real reason that you're downstairs in that bedroom? I don't like being alone. You're a 29 year old man. I don't want you slumbering down with the kids like you're their brother, you're their father. You need to feel comfortable with being by yourself. Right. So are you really ready for change? I believe that I can. I'm, I'm ready to get out of that hole. I love my kids, and they're worth it. They are very worth it. And I'm worth it. Are you ready to take that rope and pull yourself out of this hole and make a change? Yes. Right, shake me on that, then. All right, All right let's go. Being a single dad for Brian is very overwhelming. I mean, his kids are not the naughtiest in the world, but he definitely needs to learn how to discipline them. You see this bench? This is a naughty bench. They break any one of these house rules, they're going to be sitting on this bench. I don't like the idea. It's not what we normally do. It's just not the naughty okay? bench. OK, trust me, as from now, this is the naughty bench. <laughs> it was sitting there. The kids were staring at it. And then they thought they'd start playing up and see what Dad was going to do about it. I'd like you to give him a warning, please. I will. If you do not stop, I'll put you on the naughty bench. OK. She goes and he goes straight away. No. No. I hate that naughty bench. <laughs> no. 
Stop, Silas. Come back in here, Silas. Don't run down the street. Please don't. No. That is dangerous. Now, let's go. You're not going to get me. Ah, ah, ah. Silas. The kids were running around for at least 15 minutes, but I deliberately stood back. I wanted Brian to prove to himself and to the kids that I wasn't in charge of discipline. He was. Stop running. When I put them on the bench and they just ran off, I wanted to give up. I'm running around and my kids are laughing at me. <laughs> I'm putting you on the naughty bench because you're hitting me. I feel like I'm just a butt of a joke and I feel like they don't respect me. <laughs> One child onto the bench. Uh, uh, <laughs> Finally, Kaya and Silas stayed on the bench. But I wanted Dad to see that he could manage all four kids on his own. So I got him to set up a game to play with Ellie and Anna. Operation! You right, Daddy? Oh. OK. Thank you. Ah, Kai needs to go straight back. She's come off the chair. I want to be good now! All over again. I want to be good now! I want to be good now! <laughs> Silas is being a good boy, OK? You go back over to Silas. You... <laughs> I want an apology for your behaviour. I would like an apology. <laughs> Thank you. It felt very good to see that it did work and that they can listen and they can respond and that they can respect me. I would like an apology. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm not, not, no. Would you like to come and play? <laughs> That's what's going to be. Daddy did it. 2000. Oh, good try. This was the first time that I actually saw Brian disciplining his kids. It was a victory. As a parent, if you know your child's having problems at school, then you should be talking to the teachers. So today I had Brian set up a meeting with Silas's school. Thanks for coming in today. I know we'd want to talk about Silas and his behavior and kind of how he's doing in school. Yes. So let Pam start. Silas is doing very well academically. Good, very good. He does have problems with homework. Right. He often tells me he brings it in, but he doesn't. Mm -hmm. This homework is important because it's going to help Silas become a better student. It's going to help him to learn more. And not surprisingly, Silas's homework was not the only concern the teachers had. Silas's behavior is disruptive to the other kids. He's um, on the move all the time in the classroom. If I'm standing in the front and I'm doing direct instruction during math or reading time, he will be back there rolling on the floor, mm. spinning in his seat, flipping his seat over, sitting on the top, rolling on top of the desk. I felt embarrassed. And in some ways, it was, it was good to see that, you know, he didn't just act this way at home. But in other ways, it was, it was embarrassing to know that, you know, he rolls around on the floor, or distracts the class or whatever. I had no idea he was doing the kinds of things he was doing here. <laughs> But it does parallel the things that he's doing at home, too, so... Yes, it's, uh, it's just jumping in and saying, OK, what can we do to fix this right. now, and how can I work with the school? Brian, what do you need from the school? I mean, personally, as, as a father? I just, you know, I need to reach out to you guys. Absolutely, that's what we're here for. Because I, I think part of my problem has been also my lack of enthusiasm for school. Mm -hmm. so, because I know school is important, you know, and that was instilled in me, even though I didn't believe it when I was a kid. But uh, and I want to instill that in, into them. Silas's teacher said he's a good student, so it's up to Brian to make sure that Silas's academics continue at home. Silas, come on, this could be a fun time. Let's go. We got to do your homework. And sure enough, as soon as we got back home, Brian took the initiative. Here you go. So, All right. Very good. Keep going. You did a wonderful job. Your spelling is great. I'm here if you need my help, OK? Things started off really well. Brian gave the girls an activity to keep themselves occupied so that he could concentrate with Silas and his homework. Uh, What's the matter, Silas? You need some help? Silas did doing? get frustrated, but Brian got him straight back to that table and gave him lots of encouragement. No, don't. I bet you're doing a very good job. I'm very proud of you. Look at what you've accomplished so far. You've already done 13 words. Sitting next to Silas and actually having him do his homework and doing it together feels wonderful. It's one of the best things I could have ever dreamed for. Ari finished all my homework. You finished all your done? homework? You all done? Yay! All right, come here, buddy. There you go. Oh, and look, did you see what he put for number 20? My dad is fun. Thank you very much. That was very nice of you. You know what? You're fun, too. All of you are. Brian's 
a single dad with one son and three girls. So girly things really don't come natural for him. So as Silas was out with a friend, I had a plan for dad and his girls. What we're going to do this afternoon is have a tea party. This is a chance for you to be able to connect with the girls, talk about things that they like to do, discuss as women do at tea parties, right. all right? We should have a little tea party. <laughs> no! No! No little hats? No? We had tea party, but I didn't like it, so I went to cry. We don't ever play like that. Don't you want to spend time together as a family? No. I'm not having fun. Well, it's because you guys are not giving him a chance to have fun. Dad was so trying to reach out to his daughters, but it's just something that Ellie and Kaya are just not used to. I see a little girl here that wanted a tea party from the beginning. Come on, that's it. Tea for two and two for tea. The other girls were really resistant, but Brian sat down and had a tea party with Anna, and her face lit up. Excuse me, madam, would you like our grey tea or would you like English breakfast tea? I don't know. I thought there's just two of them. What I'll do is go along and serve them. Selection. And before I knew it, I saw Kaya sitting at the table. Oh, now there's three on board here. Um, excuse me, Matt, what would you like, the Earl Grey tea or the English breakfast tea? She said, do you want or or tea or or a breakfast? I was making a real fuss in that kitchen, hoping to stir up some little imaginations in the other room. Joe pretended to be the waitress, giving us tea. Just doing that, I could feed off of her imagination, you know, and then girls did, and it was just great. <laughs> I'm sorry, Daddy. When I turned around, there was Ellie. Five minutes ago, nobody wanted to be there, and now everybody was at this tea party. And there's some raspberries and strawberries just while you're waiting for the sandwiches. Thank you very much. Okay. We sat there, we had tea, and we had fun. I do believe I'm coming down with a little bit of a cold. <laughs> well, the tea party for me was a bit of a challenge, you know, but definitely worth it. To see them smile, laugh, giggle, it's just priceless. Yes. Would anybody like to spend the afternoon with me? Yeah! yeah! Brian was making real progress, touching his children's hearts. But now I needed to move on to the next step, but I needed him out of the house first. Yeah! Well, as a surprise for Daddy, I thought it would be a wonderful idea if we all got together and we gave Daddy his room back. So that when oh, he comes yeah. back, I'm going in there right now. I really wanted Brian to take ownership of his room again as a single man, as I know it's been two years since he's been divorced, and I know that I can help him move along and do that. Silas, this will be cool because you'll have your bedroom back. Kick him out. Milk all of the trash! It was time to get rid of that mess and that clutter once and for all. A big thing come through. Oh, good girl. Where do we want it? We were pulling out the boxes and vacuuming and dusting. There was so much trash. Hi. You think he's going to like this? Yes, I think he's going to love it. And then the children put the final touches in and the bed was made. And then Brian came home. OK, everybody has to be very quiet. Damn. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Good. And I just sat on the chair and made out very blasé that everything was fine. Oh, you might want to say hello to the kids. They're just in there, they found some toys or something okay. in the spare room. Yeah! <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow, my whole room back. <laughs> we all made it. Oh, thank you very much. Oh. I think Brian was a bit speechless, really. I thought that he was a little bit shocked at what had been done for him. Wow. Yep. What a difference. Going from this junk room to be having my own room again was great. And I was very proud of the work that they had done, because I know that they had helped, and they were so proud. I have a room. That was I have a room. All right, thank you, guys. What it means to me to have my own room back is kind of like starting a new life, and it was one of the best presents he could have given me. Let's get rid of it! One, two, three! But there was 
was still one thing left to do. Silas needed his room back. This is your room now. You can do whatever you want with it. <coughs> Seeing how happy they all are shows me that this family is moving forward. Brian has worked really hard to accomplish what he has with his family, and now it's my time to go and leave him alone. Hey, I'm going away for a few days, but I'll be back. I'm, gone. I'm scared. I'm nervous that they'll try and break the rules right off the bat, try and push my buttons. So when I'm gone, I want you to really pay attention and listen to Daddy, OK? I know that Brian has the tools that he needs to continue. And I'll see you when I get back. I just hope he keeps emotionally strong and he's head in the game whilst I'm gone. Bye! Bye-bye! See you soon! successfully made tremendous changes whilst I've been gone. But now it's time to see if they've really paid off. So, Brian, are you ready to take a look and see what's on this DVD? Yeah, I am. Oh. Come on. OK, let's get your homework up here. Well, you got plenty of homework to pick from. What do you want to do? You can do this one. It says, write a paragraph telling what you did over the weekend. Actually, I want to do this one. You want to do that one? Six plus three. Good job. All right. Three plus eight. Eleven. Very good. You did it, see? I know you do math. How easy that is for you. Do we have any math problems that you can't do? What I am loving here, Brian, is that you were there to support him and encourage him. What have you learned about yourself in teaching Silas how to continue with his homework? Patience. Just to be more encouraging rather than being so down on him. Yeah. If I was in his position, I would want my dad to encourage me not to sit there and say, do it. The pair of you are growing more and more self-esteem. That's true. So I think the next scene is all about pretending with the kids. <laughs> I remember. Oh, good, you've got the carpet sample. Let's take a look here. Now, so could you explain to me what we got going on here? This is a color of pink that's a mm -hmm. stride. Mm -hmm. This is green. You know, I like what you've done here. I'm loving this improvisation here, Brian. You're just rolling with it. And the kids, just look at them. They're so engaged. But perfect. OK, yes, I, I'll take 200 of those, please. Those, those decals are simply divine. Actually, this goes to our supplier here. He'll tell you where he is. Nothing says CEO power like butterflies in your hair. <laughs> look at you all. <laughs> Ouch. I mean, they've really been craving this kind of stimulation and they're now getting it. I have never, never had a time like that with him. Oh. I didn't want it to end. Give me eyes water here. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah, thank you. So, here, behavior. Hmm. No, Mama. He's jumping on the bed. Now make your bed back the way it was. Jump on the bed again, son, and I'll put you on the naughty bench. Kaya, get off the bed and put the covers back on the bed, please. Put it together! Come on, help. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll make it, I'll make it, I'll make it. Where are you part of the Food market! Food market! You two stop it or I'll put you on the naughty bench, too. So they had you riled up. Oh, yeah. As soon as you feel like that, I want you to do this and go, what do I need to do to get what I'm trying to achieve here mm -hmm. so that you can shift how you're behaving? When you've thought about that, come back and try a different approach. Kaya, get off of there. Come on, Kaya, get off. Leave her off. Do not talk to her. She's on a naughty bench. I don't like you. No. I'm not going. Ah. You leave me alone. Ah. Do not hit me. Leave me alone. No. <laughs> no. Stop throwing things. No. 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 Stop. No. Right no. Now. Not going back on there. You let me go, you bad daddy! You've been bad to us. Mean to us. Yucky to us. I don't 
don't like you anymore! You're a bad dad! What's going on with you and Ellie? I think maybe she's mad because we're not a... All of us aren't together anymore. Who's all of us? Mom. Yeah. I think she takes stuff out on me because she's upset at the situation. So you both got anger about the situation you have both been left in. And you end up taking it out on each other. But what it does is cause dysfunction here between you and your daughter. I put you on here because you were being disrespectful to me. And I would like an apology. Thank you. What are you going to do to move it on so that you and Ellie have a better relationship together? What are you actually going to do as her father? Communicate with her. Open that communication up. You've seen the dysfunction there in the relationship, and now that needs to be resolved, OK? And I'm feeling very positive about what I've seen. It's remarkable, absolutely fantastic. Well done. Can we hug? Well done. <laughs> brilliant, Brian. Absolutely brilliant. So, let's get cracking. Let's All right. get work. Good. The divorce has had an enormous impact on Brian and his relationship with his children, especially his eldest, Ellie. So now it was time to build them bridges. I just want to talk to you about something, OK, that I feel that we need to talk about. Right. Going into it, I didn't know everything to say. I didn't know clearly what I was, should be said. But I just kind of spoke from my heart. I know that in the past you've been let down by certain situations that we've gone through with your mom leaving and everything. But I want you to know that I'm there for you. And I've got this for you, OK? You see how this co goes together and it never ends? This is like you and me, OK? We're always going to be there for each other. I want you to know you can always trust me, OK? OK? I also want you to know that I'll always be truthful with you, OK? OK. You, you can come to me anytime with anything, OK? I love you. And thank you for the bracelet. It's very special, the relationship a father has with their daughter. And it was much needed for the pair of them to sit down and to talk. Coming up. Come here, come here. When Dad steps out of his comfort zone... What's feeling uncomfortable? Oh, just having everybody coming over. Mm -hmm. He starts to panic. Come on, Brian. Come here. But first, a tip for all parents. Parents, here's a fun way to reward your children for all their good behaviour. Make a reward coupon book of all the things that they love to do so that when they behave well, they can be rewarded with one of these coupons. It's a great incentive. Brian's kept himself so isolated since he's been a single dad. But I thought it was time for Brian to reach out to his neighbours for friendship and support. Not only for himself, but for his kids as well. OK, Brian, I told you I was going to throw you in at the deep end because I think you're ready for it. Right now, you're ready to go knock on these neighbours' doors and get to know who your neighbours are. Joe said, let's have this tea party. I want to break you out of this shell. So let's go. Let's invite some neighbours over for a tea party. And I wasn't too happy about that. Hey, uh, we're just... Across the way, we're having a tea party. Wanted if you wanted to come and join us. Welcome on over. All right. Come. I'm Brian. Yeah, we're having, a, we're having a tea party over there, Molly. We'd love to have you come over. Okay. Right. Okay. Come on. We've got tea party to organize. Come on. Okay. Let's have some direction here. We're having a tea party. What? As the pretend party went so well, I thought, why not have a real tea party? Come in, guys. Let's hurry up. But just as the neighbours were about to arrive, Brian went pale. What's up? Not used to this. Is it feeling uncomfortable? Yeah, feeling very come uncomfortable. Come What's feeling uncomfortable? Oh, just having everybody coming over at once without being prepared for it. I, make, I get nervous when I'm around too many people, and it just was totally out of my zone. And it was not something that I really wanted to do. Come on, Brian. No. I'm here. 
It was difficult to see all these people coming into my house. So I'm thinking, what am I going to say? What can we talk about? Come on in. Thank you. Trish and Ray. 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 I was concerned that Brian would shy away, but he gathered up his courage and he came out of his shell. Maybe you could teach me, even though I have no kids, that would be really good for me. Hey, I love you. No problem. No problem. I went from being so isolated and standoffish to giving him advice, and being able to talk with other adults was wonderful. Oh, how are you doing? Very polite. girls. Oh, how are you doing? I think Brian thought, hey, these guys are actually interested in what I have to say. So he became more confident. And you could see him glowing. And as I was pouring the tea, I was just looking over at him, just feeling really proud that he'd embraced the situation. Got some sandwiches and some pastries here. It was great to see the kids socialising with the other kids in the neighbourhood, because they don't normally do that. But they had fun. I just wanted to say thank you guys very much for coming over and being a part of this, because it's good to know you guys, know who my neighbours are, and that I'm not just the guy number one. <laughs> with, with the fortune, so. so, um, I think my work's done here. You've given me great instruction. Right here. Very good instruction. Give me a big hug, OK? I want a big hug from you. I am so proud of you. What he is doing is showing his children that he cares and he loves enough to want to change the circumstances that they've all been in. And that, to me, is gold. Stay focused, stay committed, and remember us because you love enough. Right. Okay. What Joe has brought to me is the hope and the knowledge that family doesn't have to be mom and dad. It can be whoever, as long as there is a commitment there. That's a family. Kids, Nanny Jojo's going now. You're leaving I'm, forever? I'm going now, yes. I'm, I'm going to go. miss Jojo. I like her in my house. <laughs> bye bye, Susan. I think Joe is a wonderful person and really respectful. <laughs> I'm going to miss you too. I feel that Brian's gone through many transformations in the time that I've spent with him. I think that he's recognised what each and every one of his children need from him. Take care, Brian. You too. Take care. Bye -bye. Brian's proud. Proud of being a father who has four beautiful children. And I'm proud of him for feeling that way. I feel like my kids see me as more of a dad than, than a brother, and a better dad than I've been. I need those copies. Where are those copies at? And the fact that they look forward to spending time with me is just priceless. Thank you, Burgundy. OK, Burgundy says, Silas is doing better with his homework. Well, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you. I give him encouragement, and he feeds off it. Hey, Dad, ready? Ellie has just blossomed. She has gone from being kind of quiet to herself, like I was, to seeing by my example, that to be open, that she's being more open with me. <laughs> We're not really fighting and stuff like that. Hiya. It's great to have that father-daughter relationship back. Hey, come here. You know, the challenge of raising four kids by myself is always going to be there. I definitely have hope in seeing even the small changes that have taken place. And I know that what the future holds could only be something that would bring, you know, joy. 